Welcome back, Hordlings, to more Dragon Age Origins. Still here, fooling around in Denerim. Picking up quite a lot of quests. Mysterious door. It came at me. It's not my fault. Why did it come at me? Yeah, they got to learn not to mess with me. Us, right? I mean, he's, he's just going to disappear, right? Good a spot as any to dump a corpse. Down the hatch. As there is but one world, one life, one death, there is but one God. Magic exists to serve man and never to... You were very quiet. Then. Only compared to some. Yes? I'm sorry to tell you that your husband's dead. Why? What did he do to deserve this? He was a moron. Magic exists to serve man and never to rule over. 
What else we got here? Don't say. Harin, the bloody customers are bothering me again. What do I pay you for, anyhow? Sorry, sorry. Wade is a genius. Truly, you will be astonished by his work. Uh, but he doesn't deal with customers. If you need anything, please ask me. And tell him I don't want anyone looking over my shoulders either. I'm thinking, blast it all. Uh, truly sorry, sire. This guy's a douche knocker. Welcome, friends. Welcome to Wade's Emporium. We have the finest armors in Denerim, maybe in all of Ferelden. How may we assist you? Tell me about Wade. You're obviously not from around here. Wade is possibly the most brilliant armorsmith in all of Ferelden. That's not true, Heren. The dwarves of Orzammar make the finest armors around. These piles of rust droppings you force me to make are worthless compared to their work. You never let me have the time, the materials to make something special. Customers expect their armor in a timely fashion, not years late like the last time. That happened once, just once, and you never let it drop. Smiths and my people pass work over generations. Centuries. Centuries? You hear that, you young mutt? Centuries? What's an extra year here and there to make something wonderful? Thank you, Dwarf. Your fine point has made my life so much richer. Certainly. Lots of armor. We're into finding armor. There's a love letter in that chest, I believe, and I cannot get in it. Because I got rid of our goody-goody two-shoes lockpicker bitch. Now I'm paying the iron price. Someone ought to put a stop to this fight. There's going to be a civil war. Don't believe the lies, friends of the Great Wardens assembled. The hidden pearl holds its key to resistance. The Griffins will rise again. Make it quick. Yay, leather gloves. On it.
I won't take the blame for this one. This was bad from the start. No way he was here to deal. Thanks. I ain't sticking around to see how this turns out. Probably a good idea, sir. dump this body as well before someone sees me running around town with it in my pocket magic exists City of Denrum. Quite the place, quite the place. Let's head over to the Pearl. The Enderfell is our land of shocking extremes. It is the most desolate place in all the world, for two blights have left great expanses of the steppes so completely devoid of life that corpses cannot even decay there. No insect or grub will ever reach them. It is a land filled with wonders, like the Merdain, where its gigantic white statue of Our Lady carved into its face, her hands outstretched and burying an eternal flame. Or a wise of hot fortress, with its walls of living rock towering over the desolate plains below. The Anders, too, are people of extremes, the most devout priests and the most deadly soldiers, the poorest nation in the world and the most feared. Ah, I grew up. Tell your captain that our deal is now ironclad. But for ten silvers an hour, you can get pretty close. Stop playing games, Isabella. We want our money. That scamp Kai Long sent you, right? Glad he hasn't forgotten about us. The mercenaries are right there. If you The Frodens are puzzled. As a people, they are one bad day away from reverting to barbarism. They repelled invasions from the Tevinter during the height of the Imperium with nothing but dogs in their own obstinate disposition. They are coarse, willful, dirty, disorganized people who somehow gave rise to our prophet, ushered in an era of enlightenment on top of the greatest empire in history. There are a few things you can assume safely in dealing with these people. First, they value loyalty above all things, beyond wealth, beyond power, beyond reason. Second, although they have nothing in their entire country, which you are likely to think is remarkable, they are extremely proud of their accomplishments. Third, if you insult their dogs, they are likely to declare war. And finally, the surest sign that you haven't underestimated the Ferelden's is that you think you have come to understand them. Right. Ruffians going Welcome at it. Welcome to the Pearl. I'm Sanger, the proprietor. Have a seat, get comfortable, and tell me what you need. Every one of my people here is a skilled craftsman, and don't let anyone tell you different. You'll have to go one at a time, I'm afraid. Our rooms aren't quite big enough to share between so many. But we can discuss that in a moment. So what would you like me to show you? The men or the women? Or some of both? If you prefer. A poster suggested I'd find a meeting of friends here. She scowls and makes a subtle motion toward the back rooms, as though not wanting to alert the people inside. Start it. All right, I think we're good. A little malfunction junction going on there. Turn around and walk, stranger. This affair is for white falcons only. 
Time to close shop before there's trouble. Bitch. Get a load of this guard. You're telling us what to do? Nobles want solid, reliable soldiers, not riffraff. And yeah, that's exactly what I'm telling you to do, bitch. You, you aren't no common guard. You're with all how, aren't you? Men, let's clear out. Don't, don't want to get on the king's bad side, do we? Tell Carlon I owe him one. That's right, bitch. Let me sing of heroes in honor lost and found, of monsters and men in all forms, of Dane hunter without peer, feared by the forest of Ferelden, who one art of morn spied, a heart of pure white and beam of warmest sun, a prize for huntsman's spear. Through the greenwood they ran hot and hunter, bringing stag to spear at last in long forgotten grove, heedless that the chase had waked to hunger in the golden wood. A werewolf, a creature with mind of man, lured by the hunt, come forth to lay claim. The heart is rightful tribute, drawn by the scent of cooling blood. In the silence the two hunters held Dane, spear armed against the wolf with all his brood. Knew the sinking heart he was lost, steeled for the winding roads of the Fade, and the beast spoke human-like in voice. You have taken the stag from my woods and my pack, but nothing comes without a cost. The wolf pack circled ever closer, and he who felled boars and bears of bright blade knew fear. He spoke his name in roars like gravestones offering a beast bargain. Die here, huntsman, alone and forgotten. Or take my place amongst the wolves as I take your place amongst men. Thus was the bargain struck, and the Dane the wolf pack served in wolf and form, and the werewolf to his family sped as Dane. One year, and a day all told, but some things cannot be respent, some coinage cannot be unspent. When hearts are wagered, a fisher's rent. That bum suck balls. And look who we have here. Come to apologize for leaving me bereft of my lord husband and then vanishing without a trace. You know it was just business, Isabella. Business that turned out well for you, I see. You inherited the ship, I take it. Hmm. I suppose I never did like the greasy bastard. And the siren treats me far better than she ever did him. Perhaps some introductions are in order? Indeed. This is Rude. Isabella, queen of the eastern seas and the sharpest blade in Lomeren. And Isabella, my dear, you will no doubt be amused to discover that I am traveling with a Grey Warden. A Grey Warden? Charmed. Your fighting skills are impressive! I assume you saw that little drama, and none of these poor brutes has ever proven a match for me. They are too clumsy and predictable. I fight with quickness and wit, rather than with brute force and strength. I call myself a duelist because I honed my skills in duels with warriors I encountered over the years. Will you teach me how to be a duelist? Not that I really care. <laughs> An unusual request, coming from a fearsome slayer of Darkspawn. I am flattered that you wish to learn from me, sweet thing. But I have watched you, and you seem to lack a particular grace that is required. You are accustomed to doing battle a certain way, yes? I can teach you some basics. Perhaps you can pass it on to someone who might be interested in what I have to offer. I do, however, wish to get to know my potential student better. So we shall call for a drink, and you will honor me with a game. All right, what game? Have you ever played Wicked Grace? 
It is easy to learn, but difficult to Have you ever played jizz on your face? You must watch your opponent's moves as carefully as your own. Before we start, the cards must be shuffled. Shall I, or would you like to? You shuffle them, bitch. Very well. There. That should be sufficient. Five cards each to start with. And may the cleverest player win. It looks like the deck is being kind to me today. Please, keep your hands to yourself. What's up, man? Ha! Huh. The Angel of Death card. The game is over. We must show our hands. Oh dear. Is that what you have? Do you need me to go through the rules again? I have three angels. Fortitude, Truth and Charity, and the Knight of Dawn. I win. <sighs> Still undefeated after all these years. Will I never meet my match? Now, now. There's no need for such petty accusations. You are simply an inexperienced player. You will get better with practice. Not so fast, sweet thing. I'm not sure I know you yet. Come. Another game? I suppose I could play you again. Ah, oh, you're a good sport. Another game, then. Before we start, the cards must be shuffled. Shall I, or would you like to? Fuck. I'll do it. Good. Go ahead, then. Like, my fucking stealing's gonna be any good. Are you done yet? Five cards each to start with. And may the cleverest player win. Oh! I think this card will come in handy. My dexterity is not that bad. Please, keep your hands to yourself. Ha! Huh. The Angel of Death card. The game is over. We must show our hands. You have two angels and three knights. And all the same theme. That is one of the best hands I have ever seen. You've won. Because I'm fucking balls to the walls amazing. You have proven Uncle. yourself quick and resourceful. And I would be honored to pass my skills on to you. I'm God. Teach me now, bitch. Come. We will need some space for this. That's what she said. Dokey, smoky pokey. Intimidated those bitches. Bouncer. The game hoarder is actually a bouncer at a local bar now on Saturday nights. What do you think about that, hoardings? That's right, I kick ass and chew gum. To the back alley. Dirty back alley. Shit. The fuck? 
I was hoping I'd find you. I heard about the Pearl. I don't know how, but you got them to leave with no fuss at all. The Pearl's workers will... Nobody gives orders to my men but me. A little lesson in respect is in order. I see. Don't bother sparing these louts. Things are about to get messy. I see enemies that... Holy shit balls. Do it, son. bitch out here. actually voluntarily attack you. Are they just stupid? Here's the payment I promised. I might have more work if you're interested. But I'm heading back to the market district. Back alleys are just too dangerous for me. I'll say. Codex. AODH. Long ago, a soldier from Warren, returning home after 20 years of war, he sold his sword for passage to Denerim and make his way through the Brazilian force with nothing to his name but a single crust of fucking bread. On his way home, he met an old blind motherfucker sitting on a tree stump. Hey, is someone worse off than myself? Wait. Here is someone worse off than myself, said the soldier, and he gave the old man a last scrap of bread. The old man blessed him, gave the soldier a dick in the ass. The soldier went on his way, and soon night fell. He made his bed in a tree branch, and held the woodcutter's axe at his side to ward against beasts and bandits and bitches. When the moon was high, he was awakened by the sound of weeping. Show yourself, he shouted, for try as he might, the soldier could find no one nearby. Help me, spoke the tree in which he'd been sleeping. A mage transformed me into this shape, and I'll never be set free. If you had any pity in you, you would cut me down so that my spirit could go to the Maker. So the soldier took up the axe and struck the tree. The cut bled like wounds. Soon hot blood covered the axe and burned the soldier's hands. But he held tightly to the axe and felled that fucking tree. The tree shattered when it hit the ground, and from the splinters rose a demon. Who bowed to the soldier and vanished into the fade. The soldier was chilled to the bone and could not sleep. In the morning, he found that the axe still burned like the blood of the Sylvan. But despite its heat, he could not get warm again. They say he ended his days in Guaran cutting wood for his seven fireplaces, shivering, cursing the spirits. Seven fireplaces? That's a bit overkill. 
I'm good with six. Two for my balls, four for my 12 feet of dicks. So I don't know where the fuck we are. Was it the back alley? Trying to get to the dirty back alley. People keep getting in my fucking way. Now what the fuck is going on? Holy shit nuggets! You think you're fucking funny? Them off royally. I am. Oh, this should be nice. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Perhaps I could have a try at that. Yeah, perhaps. No, perhaps not. Perhaps you suck monkey balls. But thanks for trying. Alright, folks, that wraps it up for this video. Stay tuned for more Dragon Age Origins.